Tom Moritz. What's so secretive about a vacation photo? Ah, beautiful blondes. They're not so hot. to answer. I don't know. I didn't hear you at first. I, I was tired. I must have fallen asleep. I repeat, what are you doing in Skylar's private study? Oh, Geraldine, it's all right. He said I could. How else would I have gotten the key? Knowing you, my dear, any number of ways. Can't keep anything from you, can I? Not if I can help it. All right. So Sky didn't know I was in his study, but it's his own fault. He left the key out there in plain sight. And not at all likely it was in plain sight. But you'd have found it if he'd hidden it in Outer Mongolia. Well, there wasn't anything interesting in there anyway. Raven, it is bad taste, bad form, and bad manners to snoop around someone else's personal things. Now, I don't care if he's your future husband or not. Amy Vanderbilt would never approve. Please. Please don't tell Skye. If you do, there'll be an argument before the wedding, and it is bad luck. I'll agree to that. If you will leave this room at once and return the key to its rightful place, wherever that may be. I will, I promise. All right. Now, I will meet you at the foot of the stairs in exactly one minute. And I will be tapping out the seconds until I see you descending the stairs. <laughs> suggested that we have lunch together is that I wanted to talk with you about Jody. You know, I don't want to sound like an alarmist, but both Miles and I are very concerned. Well, anyone connected with Skelly Whitney is right to be alarmed. Well, I think she's being pushed too hard by either Skylar Whitney or Gavin or maybe herself. But whatever the reasons are, Miles thinks that she's going to reach her limit soon, and he's afraid that if she goes beyond that, she's going to have some kind of a collapse. Now, that is the opinion of a doctor, and not just an overly protective sister. Well, that sounds very serious. Oh, I think it is serious. It makes no sense to talk to Mr. Whitney. He is without an interest in such a thing. Well, if we could impose on you, I think that you might be able to help. Well, tell me how. Well, Jody admires you so much as a dancer, and, and as a friend, and if you could talk to her, encourage her and help her get back some of her old self-confidence. If you'd do that for us, Martine, we would be forever in your debt. Oh, you don't have to say that. Of course, I'll talk to her. You know, I think Judy's a fine little girl and worth for it. Don't worry, I'll see what I can do. Oh, thank you. I knew it was a good idea the minute Miles suggested it. It's really like your mind. To find mine. Warm, compassionate. Yes. Those are two things which help make him a wonderful doctor. Yes. I'm sure you just know how wonderful your husband is. Oh, yes, I do. In my 
my life, I have been fortunate enough to meet someone like Dr. Cavanaugh. How a different thing would be for me. Yes, honey. Okay, honey. No, I, look, I just wrote it down so I won't forget. Get dressed at Bennett's. I'll uh, tape it to my forehead so I'll absolutely remember. Yeah. Is it a uh, nice dress? Yeah, how much did it cost? That nice, huh? No, of course you didn't. Yes, I'm sure you'd be the prettiest girl at the wedding. Look, um, star about the other night. I'm really sorry about... Now, wait a minute. Now, look, we have been over this several... I wish you wouldn't do that. <clears throat> you know, this wedding is driving me crazy. It's costing me a fortune, and I'm not even sure I want to go. Okay, Calvin, what's wrong? Just the usual, just the usual day in the life of a cop and a cop's wife. I've got to remember to pick up a dress, no less now. Remind me, don't let me forget. She wants to wear it to the wedding tomorrow, and if I show up at home without it, she'll have it in my head. Sure. Right. By the way, who are you taking to the wedding? Nobody. I'm going alone, I guess. Yeah? Well, if you'd uh, like to take one of the beauties from the Whitney Dance Company, I could have Gavin arrange a little something for you. Oh, uh, no, thanks anyway. I don't mind going alone. No, really. It's all right. Okay. Still, I think it's a, a waste of all that uh, masculine charm. Oh, it won't be a waste. I'll just share the wealth. Yes, you will. I'm looking for Detective Tyler. I'm Tyler. And I'm Stoner. Who asked? What can we do for you? I'd like some information about an arrest you made last night. A young black man by the name of Leon Washington. Oh, that's, uh, that's our friend with the fresh mouth. <laughs> You'll excuse me, I was addressing Detective Tyler. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I, it's just my want to be helpful. Do you have the file over there? Yeah. Uh, here it is. What's it doing over there? No, oh, couldn't resist it. It's uh, such an interesting case. Well, there isn't much to tell, really. Uh, Mr. Washington was part of an illegal gambling operation, which we raided last night. Uh -huh. He was part of the catch. That's about it. That's about it. I'd like to see him, please. Oh, oh, I don't think that's a very hot idea, lady. Why not? Oh, we've got a very angry young man down there in that tank. I think you should give him some time to cool off. I mean, he's so mad, he could be dangerous. He might even do, well, you know, bodily harm, and uh, that wouldn't do. I don't think that's very likely. Look, if you're his girlfriend, I have to tell you, you've made an unfortunate choice. This may come as a rather rude shock to you, Mr. Uh, Stoner. Right. But I am not his girlfriend. I am his attorney. Lawyer? That's right. Now, I won't take up any more of your time if you'll just make arrangements you for me to see my... You mean as in his attorney? Mm-hmm. Nothing to win. Has Leon Washington been able to afford an attorney? I mean, I've known this guy from way back. He's always used court-appointed lawyers, never had any money, or so he says. You may find this difficult to understand in your savage official view of things, but money is not always the primary incentive, Mr. Uh... Stone. Yeah. But it helps a little. I mean, even a lawyer has to eat, at least so I'm told. Well, it depends on the circumstances. In Leon's case, there are other things to be considered. You know, if I'm not mistaken, the ink on this card is still a little bit wet. I think our friend here is pretty new to the uh, bar. Uh-huh. Fresh out of law school, eh? You can always, uh, read the signs. If you'll excuse me, please, I came here for some information about my client, Leon Washington. I did not come here for a personal opinion about budding young lawyers. Now, if you'll just Look, let lady, me... I told you all there was to tell. Now, Mr. Washington was a lookout for an illegal gambling operation, which we raided last night. He was there, we took him in, like all the rest, that's it. Are you aware that your client has a rather extensive history? Yes, I am. But what I would like to know is, did you make him aware of his legal rights? Oh, we read him his rights all right, you can be sure of that. It's in the records. <clears throat> You're not gonna try to get him off on some kind of a slim technicality like that now, are you? Acting as a lookout for an illegal gambling operation is a relatively minor offense. But with his record, it could go pretty bad for him. If he's convicted, he could be in for a long stretch because this would be his fourth conviction. Mm, I see they taught you a lot in law school. I bet you were even at the head of your class. I was. 
Well, then maybe they also taught you that all we do is make arrests and gather evidence. Everything else is someone else's province. In this case, however, I think uh, Mr. Washington's resting here is actually a favor to society, brief though it may be. I'd say that's not your province either. <sighs> Perhaps not, but I am entitled to my opinion. And I think that uh, it's pretty obvious that Leon Washington is not a good person. He's a bad person. And it is for the good of the good people out there for us to keep the bad people in here. Mm -hmm. What you think overwhelms me with towering indifference. Now, before I go, I'd just like to say thank you very much for your cooperation and your courtesy, Mr. Stoner. Oh, by the way, what did you say your name was? Bannister. No, her first name. Miss. Mrs. Carr, I can't believe you. I, I mean, I, I had no idea that you might be my visitor. Good Lord, how could you bring yourself to come here after all the... Dr. Bryson, I'm trying very hard not to hold a grudge because I remember the kindnesses that you offered when they mattered most, and if I can do that, then the memories will begin to fade someday. You must be very happy to be home with your family now. I, uh, I think about that sometimes. Yes, I am. One of the few things that has sustained me here is the, the thought that at least you came to no serious harm. No matter what the change is in my life, my feeling for you remains unchanged. No, I have no regrets, no apologies for that feeling. It may be the only decent thing I've ever felt. Dr. Bryson, please, uh, this is difficult enough without... I, you're, you're quite right. I'm sorry. That, that was terribly presumptuous of me. It, it wasn't a plea for vindication, believe me. I know that nothing or no one can give me that. I'm... I'm quite prepared to pay for what I've done. Well, the reason I'm here... is to speak on behalf of your daughter. Valerie? Yes. You... You, you've seen Valerie? Yes. But how? Why? I, I don't understand. We happened to meet just by accident and uh, had a chance to talk, and she seemed to want to confide in me. You can take an interest in Valerie after everything that's happened? I think the girl needs compassion. That's... That's really rather ironic. That compassion for my daughter should come from you. Dr. Bryson, I didn't think I'd have to explain to you. She's heartbroken because you refused to see her. No, no, please, please, don't, don't ask me to, to see her. I can't. You can't or you won't? Believe me when I say I can't. Now, please, understand that. I, I'm, I'm afraid. Of what? What? There might be some reprisal against her or... What, are you ashamed of your past? No, 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 good Lord. I shouldn't even be discussing this with you. I'm, I'm half crazed with fear for her safety. I, look, I'm not dramatizing this to enlist your sympathy. It's the truth. <laughs> look at this. I haven't shown this to anyone. I, it was left in my cell. When and by whom, I haven't the vaguest idea, but the warning is obvious. It looks like a sick joke. No, no, it's not a joke. It's a message. It's a threat. It's a sign that I must keep silent unless... unless I want them to get to Valerie. Dr. Bryson... say anymore. I've said too much already. I, I know I haven't the right to ask you for anything, but please, in the name of God, don't say anything to Valerie or to anyone. Now, it's the only way I can protect her now. 
I, I, I really can't see her. No. The only thing I can do for my daughter is, is, is stay away from her completely. Okay, why don't you sit down for a while? All right, all right, I will. I, for a minute, I will take a breather, and then I will be on my way. I have a hundred errands to do for this wedding tomorrow, and then I have to meet with Geraldine and Raven. <laughs> Sounds like a pretty fancy affair. <clears throat> You're going to be the matron of honor, right? Yeah. Do you want to know something? I am going to be the matron of honor at a wedding where I have yet to meet the bridegroom. <laughs> How come? I don't know. I guess the situation never arose. I don't know. Uh, I, I know about him uh, by reputation, and I guess I'm just presuming if he's Geraldine's nephew. Hello. He's... Is Sid's Cafe open for business? Hi, what are you doing here? Uh, I, I know uh, we're not really open yet. This is Sid Brennan. Do you remember her from East Meadows? Yeah, Valerie Bryson? Oh, yeah, nice. oh, Sid's going to be the manager and obviously the namesake. Well, it is. looks great. I just thought maybe you were open for business because I saw two guys come in here this morning on my oh, way to work. They were just friends. Stopped in for a little coffee, a little conversation. Um, Gavin Wiley has the dance studio down the block. Yep. And Calvin Stoner's a policeman. Yeah, and we didn't have any food for them either. Yeah. <laughs> Personally, uh, <clears throat> I'm beginning to get messages from my stomach. How about a sandwich? I can go around the corner. Mm. No, thank you. No. Me neither, thanks. Crap, how do you like that? We're opening a restaurant, and mm -hmm. I have to go around the corner for a sandwich. There ain't no justice. <laughs> see you later. Good to see you. Hey, sit down. Tell me about your new job. How's it going? Okay, wonderful. Yeah. Exciting. We're doing a big wedding tomorrow at the Whitney Mansion. Oh, well, then I will see you. I am matron of honor. Oh, that's great. Mm. There'll be a familiar face in the crowd. I'm sorry Draper won't be with you, though. Me too, but I'm not thinking about it. Okay, okay. But uh, I wanted to ask you about Draper's partner, mm -hmm. Cliff Nelson. Mm -hmm. Well, he's talked me into uh, having dinner with him tonight. What? He is very <laughs> persuasive. So oh. tell me about him. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, he's charming, uh, uh, bright, witty, or so he thinks. <laughs> he's harmless, though. He's harmless. He's just, he's just full of himself. So he seems on the outside. But I guess I can handle them. You know, I got another offer today. What? A job offer from a Mr. Graham Armstrong. He's with an international photo service, and they are looking for photographers who know Europe and are free to travel, and the salary they're offering, it's not interesting. It is downright irresistible. Mm. I had to think twice before refusing. You turned him down? Sounds like a dream job. Oh, but not to me, April. I have done too much traveling already. And I, my father, no, no, I'm gonna stay right here. Yeah. How'd this guy find you? I honestly don't know. That's a puzzle. I wonder where you did get my name. You know, you have a final fitting on your gown, you and April. Uh, I have to meet her at 2.30. go and call the caterer. He's hysterical because he has so much to do in so short a time. He was crying the last time I talked to him, so he asked me to call him back. <laughs> now, please, Raven, don't dawdle. I am leaving here at exactly 2 o'clock, with or without you. And you can just wear your old black lace tomorrow, for all I care. 